Hello and welcome to Magathea, Builder of Worlds. I don't do many videos, but I've just got some new goodies from a Kickstarter that I ordered a long time ago and I thought it might be a bit of fun to do an unboxing because apparently loads of people watch them. So this is going to be an unboxing of Mantix Terrain Crate 2. Terrain Crate Expectations, I think they called it. Check it out, we're going to have a look at the servants' quarters. So I can't remember how long ago I actually took part in this Kickstarter. I think it was at least 18 months ago or more. Um, it was scheduled to come to England and be delivered uh, at the start of this year, 2020. But of course, due to COVID and everything else, and the fact that I think the toys that are actually made in China, everything is rather slowed down. So it's now July and they have turned up. A box arrived uh, on my doorstep this morning and I was dead chuffed. I had to dig, dive into it straight away, but I haven't opened any of the bags, just had a bit of a look. So we're gonna have a look at the servants quarters, which is one of the boxes that I got in this Kickstarter set from Mantic. For those of you who have looked at uh, my models on, on Magritte Builder at Worlds, you'll know I'm kind of into a lot of fine detail. I like that uh, skirmish level, role play level of detail in a, a wargaming building. I always think there's a fine line between Doll's House and war games, and you have to know where to stop. But in the last few years, more and more companies have produced more and more scenery and scenic elements that you can add that extra level of detail to your models with. Uh, Mantic are on their second large set of uh, scenery. They did Terrain Crate, which I bought last time. That was mostly fantasy stuff, all sorts of fantasy elements, battlefield things, walls, fences, uh, encampments, um, and medieval type scenery. This uh, is more Victorian and modern stuff. So we're gonna have a look at this. I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to use this quite usefully in a number of different sets of scenery of mine, some of my Victorian stuff and the great big mansion that I use for work and for uh, war gaming with as well. So we're gonna have a look at the servants' quarters. Let's have a go. Okay, so I received I received several boxes in boxes, and this box is the servants' quarters. Um, fairly plain packaging. I'm cool with that. I'm, when they go through retail in the shops, uh, the packaging is much fancier. Um, and inside, there are several small bags with different scenic items in. So let's get rid of the box. And have a look and see what we got. Okay, so scalpel and open the bag. So the servants' quarters. This is definitely very Victorian, cooler Cthulhu type things, and scale-wise, very interesting. We'll have a look at scale. I'm going to get some other scenic pieces out from some other companies, and we'll make a comparison. But uh, here you can see we've got the first bag, which is made up of. Well, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different scenic details in, which is pretty cool. Let's have a closer look. So this first bag looks like um, a bedroom set of furniture for uh, a member of staff, servant in the big house, or another bedroom in a cottage. There is another set called Cozy Cottage. I'm pretty sure that some of these scenic elements are uh, repeated in that. We've got uh, a nice modelled single bed there we go uh with the uh, hospital corners by the looks of things very nice um we have one large drawer and cupboard unit sideboard kind of thing um set of drawers there we are um really big comfy looking armchair uh which again very nice with little tassels nice little detail of tassels around the bottom now clearly we can see that oh there we go um and a bedside drawer unit, an ottoman type affair, and a standard lamp. There we go. Right then, next bag. Looks like a kitchen. Let's just open this one up. And again, a whole bunch of little scenic elements in there. In Grey plastic this time, hard plastic. We'll talk about that in a moment. There's this nice kind of Welsh dresser, nicely detailed, teapot plates, that kind of thing. 
Uh, we have um, kitchen range, Hobbs oven, rather nice. There's um, kitchen dresser, kitchen unit, drawers and cupboards. Sink with a mixer tap, probably works better than the one in my kitchen at the moment. And then um, on, we've also got some very little elements here. What have we got? We've got uh, roast ham by the looks of things on a plate, platter, that would paint up nicely. Um, stack, cake, a stack of cakes. Oh no, saucepans, a saucepan stack with your Le Creuset going in the corner of the kitchen. And um, what's really cool is a tiny little knife block as well. I don't know how clearly we can see that. A little tiny knife block. A set of knives in one of those wooden blocks that goes on your kitchen counter. That's pretty cool. Um, there's another set of bedroom furniture. Do you know what? I might have got the various sets mixed up now. But we've also got here... Um, Bath and toilets and various other things. Let's have a look. So this is the bathroom. Actually, one of the things I'm most excited about. Let's have a look here. Okay, so yeah, we've got a chest freezer uh, for sticking handy bodies in. Um, we also have bath tub with traditional lion type feet and side taps we've got a trap door hmm, okay uh that must be the trap door into the boiler house check this out this is really cool this is a boiler unit to go to sit and cook away down in the cellar produce your hot water and that kind of thing very nice bit of gear indeed like that a lot Sink, the bathroom, two taps, very good. Um, we also have here toilet with a separate old fashioned cistern and chain. Smashing detail, that one. Plus, then some other bits and pieces. An air vent, what else we got? Some paint cans, that's interesting. Um, different style system for your loo, so you can uh, you can have a modern or an old fashioned toilet, and there's also uh, a metal steel dustbin, which is all pretty cool. So, I really quite like that as a set. They've done a really good job this time, actually. Mantic, um, I'm going to go and dive into one of the other boxes, which is the set from the uh, a shopping mall, because I just want to check something out about thin plastic before I kind of like go on about the quality of this stuff. Be right back. Okay, so thinking about it, this other bag, uh, which is a duplicate of all the brown stuff over here on the table, I think is there because that's uh, another set of furniture for another member of staff in the big house. So I'm not going to bother. Um, bother I'm not going to bother unpacking that. What I am going to do is just going to dive into this bag. This bag is from the shopping mall set. Um, and what I want to do is have a look very quickly at this piece right here. Um, so. Now when the first lot of terrain crate came out, I was really happy with a lot of it. Oh, that's much, much better. Um, this, is a, look, this is a rail of clothes from a clothes store, which is pretty cool on wheels, rails here and here. Um, and this and the uh, standard lamp are actually the reasons why I'm much happier with this series of terrain crate features than the original set the, from the, their first Kickstarter. And I'll show you why. Uh, I was saying I, I, I wanted to make a comparison between uh, the second lot of terrain from terrain crate mantic and the first kickstarter that i had must be getting on for two to three years ago now 
Um, the original Terrain Crate Kickstarter that I took part in with all the fantasy and medieval elements I talked about was absolutely fantastic in many ways. Great value for money if you bought the Kickstarter because you've got so many extra bits. Um, but I was ultimately disappointed with quite a few pieces because the technology and the plastic that they were using at the time just wasn't up to their designs. So here you can see a market stool. Um, and when I hold it like this, you can see it's warped and bent and twisted all over the place. There's also a brazier, a very heavy brazier on the top and a very thin um, stand with a, 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 a set of feet at the bottom to hold it up. And here is a, a weapon rack. Again, nicely sculpted, but absolutely warped and a bit rubbish. Now, I am well aware that with this kind of plastic, what you can do to improve it or to get it back into shape is to drop it into boiling hot or very hot water. In fact, Mantic even had a video on their YouTube channel to show you exactly how to do this. And several people were pointing this out to me whenever I moaned about it online. And my thing about that is the fact that I don't think a company who's producing this kind of stuff should be producing something they know is substandard to the point they have to have a correctional video online to help you get over it. One of my favourite elements from the uh, um, original tank, uh, terrain crate set was uh, a wagon, a horse and cart. And the cart model itself was so heavy in the plastic that even after the wagon had been dropped into hot water and the, the you were able to bend back the wheels into shape um the model was that heavy that they buckled again almost straight away so they had to be replaced with metal wheels that i had from another kit and what i'm really pleased about with terrain crate 2 is that these elements like the standard lamp is far more rigid the plastic is much better quality um much more suited to this job uh as is the rail that these clothes are on, there's nowhere near as much flexibility in that. It's a much more solid plastic, much better job. And I went and found this candelabra, uh, which is in another one of the sets I've got as well. And again, lovely sculpt, and this time not at all let down by the quality of the plastic it's been cast in. So great job, uh, Mantic. I'm really pleased you've upped your game there because uh, that means I'm definitely sold on these products uh, and I would be looking for other ones as I carry on various scenery projects. So really, really cool. With a lot of this original stuff, I've taken off canopies and replaced the wooden parts with balsa or cocktail sticks or whichever else because they just make them better. Uh, but I'm really pleased to see that Mantic's design now is not let down by the product, the final product, um, as it arrives and comes out of the box. I can use this stuff straight away. Obviously... Um, for my models, I'm going to take some time to undercoat these and paint these and put them together. But for quite a few people playing role-playing games and that kind of thing, they'd work perfectly well just as they are stuck straight onto the table. So I'm really very pleased with the Servants' Quarter scenery I've got from Terrain Crate, Terrain Crate Expectations. Um, the quality of the plastic is much better than it was previously. The detail is lovely, with the uh, exception of the standard lamp. Where, which is a bit top heavy and is going to need um, basing or sticking down in a model to stop it falling over. Uh, all of these items are really great. Let's have a look though from a, a scale wise point of view and um, see if we can find some figures on how they work against it. Now there's one other thing I suppose we can need to consider about all of this and that is um, how well does it work alongside figures? Some of these things look pretty large uh, and uh, the scale of them is quite interesting. So what I've done just very quickly is I've grabbed some figures and some other scenic elements that I've got in cases that are easy into hand. Most of my scenery, small bits of scenery are in different models, so they're not around in the same way. But I have gone and found a few bits so we can have a quick look at some of these things. So, for example, if we take, let's just take the armchair. Um, all right, it's a very large comfy looking armchair uh, very nice indeed um and if we take some figures what do we got here i've got i've got uh professor moriarty um from war games foundry uh from my victorian games end of empire he's been around a very long time um i've got a, a brand new dunlending hero from lord of the rings strategy battle game just arrived from forge world this week enjoyed putting him together 
so 25 millimeter to 28 millimeter just for scale sake i've got a i do apologize an unpainted rebel fleet trooper from star wars legion how about if i put my hand behind it like that that's cool um i've also gone and picked up um a medium beast this is a lizard from oath sworn miniatures um from the game burrows and badgers which is the game i play the most of these days um and also then just out of interest this is a early medieval saxon uh warlord from sash and saber uh 40 millimeters so he's a big fella well, let's see how they kind of like line up against these things now i buy these this stuff mostly for 28 millimeter games for my victorian games and that kind of thing so for a figure like this some of these things in actual fact look quite large um most of it isn't too bad i'm not too bothered about it things like the, the kitchen sink stands up against it's pretty big um but it isn't too bad uh but then there are some elements that kind of like then will kind of terrifying really if we take our stack of saucepans um and assume that professor moriarty here who's mounted on a penny piece um is getting on for six feet tall that stack of saucepans is uh yeah, four and a half five feet tall which is quite a lot really um so that's worth taking into account the single bed is another example actually quite large um we can take i don't know how well we can see that in there oh yes we can you can see the single bed is over 40 it's nearly 45 millimeters in length that means my saxon warlord would probably find it comfy enough possibly a bit on the narrow side but um he's going to fit on there quite well so that's quite a large piece of scenery um if we take the armchair like i said to start off with here's a large armchair i've got a number of armchairs here from frontline wargaming who were the company i first started to buy resin scenery from and as you can see there's quite a considerable difference in size so i don't think it makes a massive difference overall to your game here's a uh, that's a, a, a resin post box um, and here again is my crate my stack of saucepans um, comparison wise pretty close if you've ever stood next to an old-fashioned post box out in the, high, in the high street you'd be quite surprised if your stack of saucepans was that large um, having said all that though i'm not really that bothered um i think these elements are going to look great in a model in an individual model in some cases they'll work really well for some of the larger heroic scale figures like the b and b figures um they'll be really cool i don't have to worry about the fact that my dunlending looks tiny next to the kitchen range maybe uh because he's never going to see them they're never going to come in, uh, appear in the same game so from that point of view not too bad um I think he'd really quite enjoy lying around in that bed, though, wouldn't he? So I think the uh, scale of some of these elements uh, is not entirely true, but I don't think that's going to make any difference at all when they're painted up and they go into a model. They're still going to look really, really cool, and I can't wait to get these into different bits and pieces as we go. This lot certainly is going to be used to enhance my Victorian mansion, um, that's been waiting for things like toilets and bathtubs for probably 10 years now um so thanks for watching come back and see us on magrathia builder of worlds and see what else we get up to in the next little while have a great summer i hope you're enjoying being locked down still and some of you got out to work cheers Okay, so I'm loving the toilet model. It's fantastic. Um, on the top, at the back, like a real loo, you assist in the touches. There's a slot in the top of the loo, and you can either choose to use a modern system with a lever handle or an old-fashioned Victorian-style uh, system with a, standing on its pipe with a chain pull. And because of the better quality plastic, it's nowhere as wibbly-wobbly as it would have been 
in the original terrain crate if this, they've made this then. So, top job, Mantic. Thanks for the toilet. I'm looking forward to the other sets soon. Cheers.